In this session, we are going to look at the common issues we find with children's medication and allergy needs. We'll then look at some of the systems you can put in place to help you manage these safely. This is our longest bite-sized session as there's lots of important information to cover. Remember, you can pause the session whenever you want if you need more time on any of the slides. A quick win is an improvement that is easy to implement, has immediate benefit and can be delivered quickly with minimal effort. You don't need to use the model for improvement to meet the changes. Ensuring children's medication and allergy needs are safely managed falls into this quick win category. We're doing a series of bite-sized sessions on quick wins to help you make easy changes that will have a positive impact and take minimal time and effort. In this session, we will look at the medication guidance and the common issues we find in relation to children's medication and allergies. We'll then move on to look at the processes in place, how you can quality assure, and how your quality assurance calendar can help you. The management of medication in daycare of children and childminding service guidance document is available on our website. It provides detailed information to support you to manage medication safely in your service. It can be used to help you review your policy and procedures and to develop your medication records. We often find key information is missing from children's records about their medical or allergy needs. As a result, staff could interpret how to manage children's needs in different ways. The medication guidance provides details on the information that should be recorded for children requiring medication. For children that have either allergies or long-term medication, we often find that information is not recorded about what triggers a reaction that causes an allergy or the need for long-term medication. As a result, staff can sometimes miss important cues. We often find information about how a child will present is not clearly recorded and staff can be unaware of this. As a result, staff do not know what symptoms could indicate a child is either having an allergic reaction or requires their long-term medication. Particularly with life-saving medication, we often find it's unclear what happens if the initial action is not effective. For example, a medication record may state a child with an inhaler requires two puffs if experiencing certain symptoms. However, information is not recorded on what to do if that is not effective. This means staff can be unsure what to do if a child's health is deteriorating or not responding to the medication given. Recorded information needs to be up to date and reflect children's current needs. It is best practice to review consents at least every three months or at the start of a new term. We often find information does not reflect a child's current needs or has not been reviewed for a considerable period of time, so staff are unsure if it is up to date and this can cause confusion. Another common issue we find is that medication is out of date. We see this most frequently in life-saving medication, such as asthma inhalers and EpiPens. We can find medication is not stored appropriately. This can include medication being left in easy reach of children or not stored as per the instructions, for example, in a fridge. Life-saving medication is sometimes not easily accessible to staff and occasionally not taken when children go on outings. Another common issue relates to who has supplied medication. Parents should supply any medication to be used, either prescribed by a doctor or purchased from a pharmacy. Services must make sure parents provide written, time-limited consent for the child to be given medication for a minor ailment or allergy. Children's paracetamol or ibuprofen works as antipyretics. 
which help to reduce fever as well as being painkillers. You can't give them both at the same time, but if one doesn't work, you may want to try the other one later. Antipyretics aren't always necessary. If a child isn't distressed by the fever or underlying illness, there's no need to use antipyretics to reduce a fever. More information about this can be found on the website on the screen. We often find systems are not in place to determine whether children have been given any medication, including paracetamol and ibuprofen, before arriving at the service. Children can get coronavirus or COVID-19, but they seem to get it less often than adults and it's usually less serious. If a child has any of the main symptoms, a test should be undertaken to check if they have coronavirus as soon as possible. More information on what to do if a child has symptoms can be found on the website on the screen. We can find staff are unsure who is responsible for doing what. For example, who is responsible for checking medication forms as they come in, who reviews medication with parents, or who checks if medication is still in date. During inspection, we sometimes find poor quality information is recorded for children with asthma, and staff are sometimes not confident in how best to support children if they experience asthma symptoms. There's lots of information available on the Asthma UK website and many services have told us they find this helpful. We often find the safe management of medication and children's allergy needs falls down as one or more of the steps in the process isn't working as well as it could. This might be because people aren't sure whose role it is to do something, because staff don't know what information is needed, or because medication forms don't prompt staff to ask the right questions. It's therefore important to review all the steps in your process to see what's working well and where you could make some changes. Next, we're going to look at some of the steps in the process you might find useful to review. It can be useful to understand the roles of staff so as everyone is clear on their responsibilities. For example, who's responsible for completing medication and allergy forms? Who will ensure medication is taken on outings? And who will review children's medication and allergy needs with parents? You will also need to consider what will happen if someone is off, for example, on holiday. Who is then responsible for undertaking a task and how will they know they are responsible, particularly for an unplanned absence? Consider how you make sure everyone knows exactly what they are responsible for. It's important to go through every step of the process to ensure it is clear who is responsible for each step and consider how everyone knows this. It's important to understand the skills and knowledge staff need to undertake the steps in the process they are responsible for. Supporting staff could include, could include training on how to complete medication forms correctly or building confidence in how to ask parents for more information about their child's allergy needs. For every step in the process you review, you will need to be sure it is clear who is responsible for that part of the process and that the staff responsible have the right skills. It's helpful to understand how well the format used for recording information actually supports you to manage medication and allergy needs. When you are reviewing the format, there are many things you will want to consider. These could include, does the form include prompts to record all the information that is required? Are different formats needed for different circumstances? For example, you may want one form for short-term medication and another for long-term medication. This will enable different prompts to be used depending on the circumstances. You may want to include a prompt for triggers and also symptoms in a long-term medication form. Does the format allow enough space for staff or parents to record all the information that is needed? 
Does the format provide prompts to record the action to be taken if the first treatment is not effective? In other words, does it allow you to record a response to the what if question? Remember, it's always helpful is to refer back to the medication guidance to support you. It can be useful to ensure there is space to clearly record when medication and allergy needs have been reviewed and any updated information. Remember to ensure that it is easy to follow so all staff are clear what the most up-to-date information is. It's helpful to consider the process you have in place to ensure medication is in date. Also think about how you ensure parents have sufficient time to get new prescriptions before medication expires. Consider how appropriate are the storage arrangements for medication. This could include how accessible is life-saving medication to ensure it can be accessed quickly and easily in the event of an emergency. How do you ensure medication is not kept in easy reach of children, including in children's bags? What procedures are there to ensure life-saving medication is always taken on outings? Is there appropriate storage in your setting for medication and is this used? For non-prescribed paracetamol and ibuprofen, you may want to consider does your policy reflect the medication guidance in relation to parents supplying these and having time limited permissions in place? What procedures do you have in place to determine whether children have been given any medication, including paracetamol and ibuprofen, before arriving at the service? We have highlighted from the medication guidance some of the processes which should be reviewed. Each service is unique and you need to consider how you can review each step of your own process. One of the important things to ask at every step is who is responsible for doing this? Do they have the right skills, knowledge and time to complete the tasks? It can be useful to track children who are on medication or have an allergy. Look at one child at a time and follow every step of the process to see how well it has worked for them. You will also want to speak with staff to ensure they have a good knowledge of the child's individual needs. This gives you good quality information to support you in knowing how well you are meeting the child's medical or allergy needs. Putting dates in your quality assurance calendar is a helpful way to prompt you to undertake checks in relation to children's medication and allergies. These dates could include dates to track children with medication and allergy needs, dates to review medication with parents, dates to speak with parents to remind them that medication is due to expire shortly. Dates to check a sample of medication and allergy forms and dates to check the medication on the premises is in date. You should go through every step of your process to see which checks are needed and then ensure dates are in your quality assurance calendar to support these to be undertaken. We hope you have found the session helpful. We've explored some of the common issues we find in relation to medication and allergy needs. You will want to look at every step of your process and refer back to the medication guidance to ensure you're managing children's medication and allergy needs safely. If you found the session useful, then please feel free to tweet about it using the hashtag ELCIMPROVE. If you would like any more information on our improvement programme, please email us at the address on the slide.